And if you think about it logically, right, these grading companies aren't going to want to sit there and say, oh, yeah, we graded your car to 9 before, but really it's a 9.5. We made a mistake. We're bad at what we do. What's up, everybody? Hello, hello on a episode 10 of Mealy Stocks. Thanks for coming back and checking us out. We are part of the Slab Stocks Network, myself, Jamil, and Slab Stocks. I am the owner of the Mealy Pops shop here in Gainesville, Florida. So we are Mealy Stocks. And so uh, this has been a fun fun uh, podcast, video cast, whatever you want to call it for me. And we're going to get into some more uh, grading questions today. After you saw episode nine, we had a, a great kind of uh, interaction and a lot of people were just asking questions, a lot of views on it. So we thought, why not continue the discussion uh, for episode 10, which I'm really stoked about. So let's get into that. Before we do, just want to call your attention to one little thing that I got. Always give you a quick plug for Mealy Pops and what we got going on. So this is our website, mealypops.com. Please, please, please go check it out sometime. We have all kinds of boxes on, on the site um, from sports cards to Pokemon cards. Um, you can actually register with the on the website. This is my personal element here. But you can website or you can register on the website, get some free rewards. We got all sorts of new things that we're constantly adding to the website as we kind of get it growing out and building it out. So go check out mealypops.com. Get yourself 500 mealy bucks when you uh, sign up, and you'll be able to use that in the future for gift cards and purchases. So thanks for that. Appreciate it. All right, let's get into episode 10 today. I'm uh, loving this, and I'm also fearing it because I know with grading there comes so much questions and also kind of just really uh, anxiety. To, it can be tumultuous for people. It can be, uh, it can be very nerve, nerve-wracking for people. And so hopefully with these last two episodes, episode 9 and episode 10, go check out 9 if you haven't. Um, I'll address some questions I see more so from the card shop perspective and really what I'm listening to my customers and the people who grade with us um, more and more what they're asking and what they're trying to understand with grading. So hopefully we can uh, cover some of that today. All right, so first question, just like last week, I had a question posed um, and I will start it off with this one today. So what kind of cards do you grade? And this might be a more informative for people. And maybe you guys might want to fast forward because you don't care what I grade, but that's cool. Um, what kind of cards is Jamil gray? What kind of cards is a shop gray? What kind of cards is Mealy Pops looking to move? Um, and so let me go ahead and I'll address that uh, if I can. So for me, um, we're, we're, we grade a lot of stuff. And the reason why is become twofold for me. One is that I'm finding that the market today, specifically eBay, because we've all used eBay for the last 15, 20 years to substantiate and to uh, market cards has become very flawed and nothing against eBay, so to say, but there is no help for the seller anymore. And I'm just being raw and honest. You guys kind of get that from me. Um, I don't want to, in the comments, don't tell me all your horror stories because everybody's got them. And honestly, we all don't want to hear it because we've all dealt with it. It just creates more negativity to the guy who returned my card 20 days after and after he got an injury and he said that there's a scratch on the PSA 10 case. I've heard it 500 times. I get it. So one, one element for me is I, I, I am grading more, and the reason why is because I need to have more of an objective valuation when I sell cards. It seems like today, and I'm not sure if it's a new breed of people coming in, if it's flippers that are coming in or what it is, are expecting cards to be tens no matter what, and that's just not the, the truth of it. Uh, the quality control from these companies, Panini and Tops and Upper Deck and all of them, they're doing the best they can, but these cards go through you know really a circus of kind of handling and packing out, so... Uh, they're not going to be tens. And so for me as a shop owner, the first side of it is I want to have cards that have an objective number on it. And I want to be able to resell that in a much easier way. Um, I think that's an important element uh, to reselling and, 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 to, and to buying and selling now is to have cards graded. Um, even when they may not be a good grade, a six, seven, or eight, at least you have an objective number on it, right? Versus selling a raw card, which is very subjective. And then the second thing why I grade cards is um, is the number one reason why a lot of you do is there's a lot of value in it, right? Um, we've learned and what we've seen in the last really year and a half is almost any card, if it does get a gem mint, specifically PSA or BGS, um, it's going to have a value retention you're going to gain on it, right? As long as you kind of follow some, some, some correct rules with that. So there's the value element and then there's also the element of the shifting market where uh, we're trying to protect ourselves. So that's um, one of the reasons why we do it. Now, the kind of cards that I grade, um, I go through kind of a thought progression, all right? And the thought progression is this, is number one, is the card gradable? Is it going to get a 9 or a 10 for a modern sports card? And let me just preface this whole episode by saying uh, I'm going to be discussing everything uh, in the form of modern sports cards. I'm not going to be talking about vintage cards. 
I'm not going to be talking about uh, gaming cards, which I maybe we'll get to later, but really low end, mid end, and kind of that lower end of the, or that uh, beginning end of high end. So that spectrum of cards from, you know, 20 bucks to maybe let's just say $1,000. That's kind of what I'm talking about when I, when I discuss this thing. So going back to that thought progression, uh, what kind of cards do I grade? One, I ask myself, is it gradable? Is it going to get a nine or a 10? Did I look it over? Did I check it out? Is it going to, is it going to grade well? Two, what service should I grade at? And that's important because I need to know about the return time and the potential or loss potential that I can have if I grade it too long, such as in a bulk grading submission. And then three, uh, which grader am I going to grade it with? And that's a very important BGS versus uh, PSA versus maybe an SGC or a CGC. So I'm looking at rookie cards, uh, obviously, right? That's the commodity that we all look at. I'm looking at low numbered cards, really inserts, refractors, parallels. I'm looking at star cards. Um, and even I'll even grade star base cards. Uh, guys were getting on to me a long time ago about 2017 uh, Mahomes cards. Uh, I was getting them for really cheap, 10 cents, 50 cents, yada, 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 of 2018, second year contenders. Sorry, not 17. 2018 contenders and prism and stuff like that. It's super cheap. And now go look at what a PSA 10 of a second year Mahomes base prism, right? Or a second year Mahomes uh, contenders card is. So those are kind of some things that I'll look at and I'll try and be ahead of the curve if I can. Uh, am I anticipating a player to be really big? Am I anticipating a certain card to be really big? And then I would consider grading that. Um, that's kind of the first question that I would I would say. Uh, there's a lot of uh, answers to that um, in terms of what kind of cards do I grade? Do I grade certain cards at certain companies if they look a certain way? Yeah. Um, one quick n uh, thought on that is maybe I'll grade an autograph sticker card that doesn't look like a 10 BGS autograph. Maybe it's a little bit off the sticker or it has a slight smudge or a slight streak in it. And I may send it to PSA and not grade the autograph just because I don't want the auto grade on there. For those of you who don't know, if you send a card to Beckett that's auto grade, autographed, you have to you have to grade the autograph. It's just no way around it. So at least PSA has the option for you to do that. So there's little intricacies as you grow in grading that you'll learn about when you do it. All right, so that's kind of some of the cards I grade. Um, I know that, that that's kind of a loaded question. I could go into probably hours and hours and hours and talking about different kinds of cards and players and sports, uh, yada, yada, yada from that, but I'm not going to. You guys learned last week I'm a little long-winded. All right, so the second question... Uh, that I'm going to go over today is this idea of cracking, right, and regrading. And this is a big, 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 big element in grading now where people look at cards, look at the subgrades, or look at how it looks in a holder, and then say, you know what, I'm going to crack it and regrade it. So I'm going to talk on this for just a second so you guys can hear my, my thoughts on it. And I want you to really, really, if you're, if you're new to grading, take heed to this because this is not an exact science. So, um, is everybody kind of cracking and regrading if they don't get the grades they want to try and grade again and hopefully a different grader sees it? Yeah, I mean, that's happening all the time. Um, but a couple things I want to point your attention to. Number one is the card serial numbered. Um, the card serial numbered, um, I don't know for sure if this is true or not, but PSA, BGS, all these grading companies, what's, what's, it, uh, what's it to them to not just put down what the serial number is of some of these cards when they grade them? Um, so if you have high-end cards with low serial numbers, um, who's who's to say that that hasn't been recorded? And if you do resend it in, you crack it, they're just going to give you the same grade or a worse grade. Um, there's some thoughts on that. Second is authenticity issues. So I do see that a lot is, is problems with authenticity in cards. Sometimes there'll be cards, right, that may be vintage or maybe even modern, and they may have a certain grade. Let's just use uh, BGS. They say BGS 9 on them, right? And someone says, I'm going to crack it and send the PSA to try and get a 9 or a 10. Well, then the card comes back altered or minimum size requirement or an eight, right? All three of those things have just now ruined that whole crack crossover. Uh, so you have to be really careful if you're going to do this. Um, there's also the element of fake cards, cards that are maybe faked in slabs. And I don't want to get into this too much because I haven't read so fresh with the BGS news and all that. But there are fake cards that are slabbed and they can be slabbed. I've seen it in all of the grading companies where cards are fake or cards are mislabeled and they're maybe a reprint card and they're seen as a rookie card. Um, I've seen a lot of that. So um, when you crack a card that you have, there may be some issues with the card when it was graded and the grader may have missed it. People are human. So there's that element too that when you think about with cracking and um, and regrading them. And so some things to think about, I hear that a lot. I get that question a lot. People kind of convince themselves of a grade and then they chase it and they chase it and they chase it. And then what happens is they chase it so hard that they lose so much money <laughs> in the long run, which is obviously not smart. So there is an element to that where you need to think about if you're going to be one of those people who's cracking cards and grading them. It is happening. It's just the honest truth. I'm not going to sit here and lie and say people aren't doing it. It's happening all the time. Um, but there, there you go. There's my thoughts um, on that one. 
All right, so uh, third question, which is kind of along the same lines, um, is should I try for a bump? And what I mean by that is, let's say you have a PSA 9, or let's say you have a BGS 8.5, and the subgrades on the BGS say something like 8, 8, .5, or 8 9, 9, 9, and you think, oh, if I can get the 8 to an 8.5, then this card will be a 9. Or let's say you have a PSA 8.5, and you think, oh, if I could get the you know bump to a 9. So that idea of taking the card in the slab, submitting it to the graders, and then trying to get the bump on the subgrade or getting the bump on the overall grade. Um, I'll, I'll just kind of give you uh, two cents on this. I think it's a bad idea. <laughs> I think that when you try and bump stuff, um, and this has just been my experience, and maybe you have you out there have had greater experience, but bumps on grades are something like 3% or 4%. And if you think about it logically, right, these grading companies aren't going to want to sit there and say, Oh yeah, we graded your card a nine before, but really it's a nine five, and we made a mistake. We're bad at what we do. That's really not going to happen very often. So I've met a lot of people who will say, "Oh, I'll get this card bumped up. I'll get this card, you know, da 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 da," and then they wind up spending too much money, and then they've not done anything to help their cause. So something about bumps, I, I'm not a big fan of it. I mean, if you have a high high end card, remember, I'm not talking about high high end cards today. But if you have a high high end card, it does make sense to try and maybe have a a uh, couple second or third fourth eyes on it um, but for that low to kind of low high-end uh, range I mean bumps are, are, are not a big thing that I, I think are important that for those of you who want to know it's called a graded card reviewed uh, you can get that done or a GCR through Beckett or through PSA um, crossover that term might be used a lot too maybe you want to try it from a BGS to a PSA PSA to a BGS that's called a crossover review um, but for for that sake Bumps don't usually work, in my experience, in, in, in talking with people. All right, and then lastly, um, it's a question I've had actually recently more than more than ever, and I think this is because people are so focused on grading times, they're so focused on the grades they're getting back too. But people have asked me a lot, how much time is spent actually grading my card? How much how much time do you think is spent looking at my card? And I'm going to be very frank here in that the sense that if these grading companies are getting hundreds of thousands and hundreds of thousands of orders if not millions of orders and they're getting behind on it um i think there's going to be less than 20 to 30 seconds per card specifically with psa and bgs looking at your card so why is that important um it's very important if a grader in true graders i've heard in the industry that you know they should be able to look at a card in 10 20 seconds tell you what the grade is if that's the case you guys need to stop sending in cards that as you look at them really quickly, you can realize this is not that great. Um, I've seen a lot of people out there who will get a nine on something and the card really is a nine or lower. And it's based off of something basic like the centering is just really bad or the corners are just, there's a really significant issue there on a card. Um, so I bring that up because I think you should, should know that there's not a lot of time being spent on grading some of these bulk submissions. Uh, these companies can't do it, right? If you look at some of the Financial statements of PSA because they're you know they're trade on the stock market. You can crunch those numbers and figure it out that their their time per card is probably less than a minute per card, if less than that, uh, for these graders. So um, it's one of those things that I would just consider as as you guys look at grading and you look at it from a, a bulk perspective. They're not spending as much time as you probably think they are on these cards. Trust me, they're not sitting there with a magnifying glass and looking at your card for three hours. That's not how it works. Um, so just something to think about as you guys move forward in this whole grading world. All right, well, there's some more questions I answered. Hopefully it's helpful to you. Um, I, I'd love to see in the comments if you guys would, would write down in the comments below just more questions you guys have, things that you want to talk about more in episodes. These are just four questions that, I've, I, that I thought additionally past last week's episode might be helpful to you. All right, so what's coming out this week? Some new releases for 2020, November 17th, no, 18th. Wednesday and then November 20th this week. So Wednesday, Immaculate Basketball comes out, which is a big release, 2019-20. Uh, Immaculate Basketball, I'm sure you'll see in the graphic here, 2019-20. Uh, Immaculate Basketball, one of the last releases of 1920 class. And the reason why I think it's actually very important is we still have not seen a Zion logo main card. And Immaculate will probably yield that if we uh, get lucky and someone will pull it. Um, on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday this week, or maybe throughout the week, you'll see it in Immaculate. So Zion's first logo main. It's a big release. Beautiful set, Immaculate. I like what Immaculate is. Panini puts it out. Five box cases. They're going for about 12000 I think, right now. 13000 um, And then Wednesday, another massive, massive release. Not from Panini or Tops, but from Upper Deck in the sense that 2020-21 slash 
Upper Deck Series 1 Hockey is released. Now, some of you guys might be like, Jamil, I don't deal with hockey. I don't know anything about ice. I don't know anything about sticks. Just listen to me for a second. This hockey class is actually touted as one of the best ever uh, to come out in the last decade or so. Um, the number one pick, Alex Lafreniere, is touted as a, a guy who's paralleling Connor McDavid. He's got drafted. He's going to be playing for the New York Rangers, massive franchise in the NHL. The New York Rangers, if you don't know, are a young team touted with a lot of young talent. And his Young Guns card will be in this set, um, as well as other rookies that will be in the set with their Young Guns card. So if you're new to hockey, Young Guns is kind of seen as the prism rookie card, if you, if you will, for basketball. For hockey, it's the Young Guns Upper Deck Series 1. So these come out on Wednesday. And one thing I tell people is um, before it blows up hockey, it's it's an affordable product. It's about $100 a box for it. And you can do really well with it, yet alone just getting a base Young Guns of Lafreniere. What if you hit some of the parallels of it or some of the other really cool things they got going on? So that's Wednesday. That's a big, big release for hockey. And then Friday, we have 2020 um, football uh, that is playoff, Panini playoff, which is a nice product that I think is a little bit more affordable than the other brands that comes out. So big releases this week. Um, have fun with it. And I will see you guys on the flip side. Keep supporting um, Slap Stocks. Keep supporting the Mealy Pop Shop if you can. Follow us. Subscribe to our, our outlets. Share it with other people. And until I see you next week, guys and gals, see ya!